Hey guys, Gemma from ASD Rocks. It has been a rather tumultuous past 24 hours. Um, I didn't realize the impact that the video of Bo watching someone have a huge rant uh, on the internet would have. And I suppose I didn't realize that because not because I'm inconsiderate or don't understand that there are many of us that have different opinions, but I didn't understand. I'd never seen this guy before. I've never heard of him. Um, someone just sent me the video and I was exposed to it the same way Bo was. And I think it's really important that I address this because I've had an influx of huge number of uh, people wanting to talk, uh, wanting my opinion, wanting to know how I feel about it and telling me, you know, informing me about this particular person and, you know, their journey. Um, so there's a few things that I do have to say. Number one, uh, I absolutely stand by uh, showing Bo that video for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, it is my job as a parent to prepare Bo in a safe environment to come across these sorts of outliers, people who have very strong opinions um, about things. And for him to be there with me, for me to say, don't worry, chill, 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 you know, um, relax. It's that he is going to come across this in his life. He's going to come across people with extremely strong opinions and it doesn't matter whether it's on uh, autism, sexuality, label, 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 whatever it is that we're doing. Um, you know, there are there are extremists out there in all scenarios and Bo has to be able to cope with that and, and cap be capable of it. And he also has to hear these messages and still know that they do not define him that um, he is allowed to have his opinion and that seeing someone rant and rave, you know, whether it's about something he aligns with or something he doesn't, that he's able to make his own decisions on that sort of thing. So that's fine, but that's not what's really come out of all of this. The question that seems to have come out of all of this uh, is more about how I, f uh, how we, I, uh, feel about the uh, the actual symbol or the flag or the symbol on the flag, the inf the infinity symbol, um, or the puzzle piece. Someone asked me specifically about the puzzle piece versus the 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 um, symbol, and I'm going to say to all of you what. I have said individually to each one because I know that there is a very large number of people who have their sexual preference that isn't necessarily heterosexual, so it falls under the LGBTQ um, banner that have autism. But I, I don't believe, in fact, I really believe it's a step backwards for the LGBT community to associate sexual preference with a genetic neurological disorder. Um, I think it's a massive step backwards. If you have been a follower of ASD Rocks for long enough, you will know that uh, we are extremely open to uh, anyone's preferences, no matter what it is. No, we aren't pro any kind, like the rule in this house, look, let's just put it this way. The rule in this house is nothing permanent on your body till you're 18 minimum right? That's it. You want to go and get a, you know, um, you want to dye your hair, you want to shave your head, you want to, 
you know, um, do whatever. It's, I've got no problem. You want to wear dresses. You want to wear knee-high boots. You want to wear, you know, you want to play around in my clothes, which my kids have done since I was, since they were babies. Um, you know, I got no problem with any of it. You want to do something permanent to your body? No. Nah. Finn wanted an earring. See, this is the thing. I am actually a huge disciplinarian. Finn wanted an earring, a little one up here. I said to him, no, uh, you're 15. Now, most, most people wouldn't have an issue with that, but I know how much we change as people, as we grow and develop. I know because I've done it. And trust me, I've done it all, right? Which is why I don't have an issue with the boys experimenting in any way they want, as long as they do it within a safe environment where their experimentation with whatever they're experimenting with, it's sex, drugs, rock and roll, you name it, music, what I don't care. It needs to be a controlled environment where safety is number one. That is my role as a job. Not to tell them how to think about it or feel about it. I can influence, absolutely, when it comes to something that I believe is going to endanger them. Uh, however, I, I want them to make up their own minds about these things. Now, what I am really, really concerned about the only thing that I care about when it comes down to this, like I'm actually really anti-label. I hate labels. I hate labels so much because I was always try. Are they my family, my parents uh, were always trying to label me. And obviously I grew up in the late seventies, early eighties when there weren't that many labels around. ADHD didn't exist. Um, autism was definitely not on, on uh, anyone's uh, radar unless you were, you know, severely autistic. It wasn't even the, on the radar when Bo was born. So um, I, I, I was diagnosed with uh, dyslexia when I was 13. No one even knew what the hell that was back then. I was the only kid in my school made to wear these stupid colored glasses. Um, I was, you know, so being different was, it was a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, whether it was ADHD, whether it was autism, whether whatever label it was, I'm just, I'm really anti-labels because I feel like it is so divisive. I know people that, and, and I know specifically a lot of people that I am really close with, like they, they, they feel like their labels set them free. Um, what I'm concerned about in this scenario is that we are forgetting our commonality. We are forgetting that we are all people with the same color blood. The more labels, the more flags, the more you know, little things that we have to identify us as individuals, the more we're forgetting that we are, in essence, a community of human beings who have more commonalities than, than, than what we're trying to divide ourselves up into. We live in a world now where we don't really have to fight too hard. If you're living in a first world country, even a second world country, uh, you know, we, you, we don't really have to fight too hard for our right to sleep with whoever we want to sleep with, uh, to dress however we want to dress. And I feel like what we're doing is alienating ourselves from the love of a community that's, that's just so accepting. Um, yes, there are going to be outliers. Yeah, sure, you're still going to get the KKK and they're still going to be, you know, thinking a specific way. And you're never going to change that. It doesn't matter how many flags you have. It doesn't matter how many labels it says dyslexic, ADHD, autistic. You, we're going to drown. Soon people aren't going to be able to see each other underneath all of these labels. How do I identify? My label says, hello, my name is Gemma right? A label to me is only useful to get the funding that I desperately need for my son. When he went to Southern Autistic School, 
he, we had to have the diagnosis of autism. We just had to have it. For him to get the funding for the therapies that he needs, for the aids that he needs, for the shoes that he needs, for the, you know, all of the things, we had to have it, okay? If I am getting along very well in my life and I don't need funding or medication or whatever it happens to be, uh, I don't I don't feel the need to thrust my label in someone's face. Why can't I just be me? Why can't that just be okay? My kids are just them. They are who they are. With Bo, it's different, right? With Bo, it's just different because the kid was non-verbal. He couldn't, he had no um, receptive communication. So he didn't understand. It wasn't about expressive communication. It was receptive communication. I couldn't give him, you know, I couldn't say to him at the age of five, put your shoes on. So there was an absolute need for that. Well, I, we weren't out and proud and marching around screaming, I've got autism, look at us, until I realized that I actually had 17 years worth of video footage of how we got from where we were to where we are today. The pride is not about the autism, it's about where, how, how far he has come, how amazing a person he is, how expressive, how emotional, how just what I, that's where the autism pride comes from. He's autistic and I am so proud. That kid has worked harder than most adults I know. He has been in full-time therapies, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when I say 24 hours, that kid does not produce his own melatonin. It took me eight years to get him to a pediatrician um, with no sleep at night because it, it, he was processing and verbal stimming. Um, and I would lie in bed with him and have to try and shh, 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 you know, quiet brain, quiet in mind. The, the autism pride isn't about, hey, I've got autism, isn't that cool? The pride is look at this child, right? Go back, go into the videos up there, right? Click on videos, go down to playlists, take a look at all the playlists, go to when he was two, go to the therapies at home section, go to the zero to two or the two to four years old. Look at how severely autistic this child was. And then, and then take a look at the way he is today and where he is today. That is nothing but early intervention. That is nothing but hard work on both of our, on the whole family's part. The pride is not that he is autistic, the pride is in who he is as an autistic person and the work he has done and how far he has come. That's the pride, right? What his sexual preference is, although he displayed his choice of sexual preference from a very early age, much earlier than Finn did, um, as everybody would know, it was really Finn everybody was watching through those those really formative years. How many people said that he was gay? How many people said, oh, you know what? There is no doubt. You know what? You were wrong. And maybe he'll be fluid later on and, and he'll tr decide to, to experiment like I did when I was a kid. That's up to him. But ultimately, I'm not labeling him with anything. He brought a girl home. He's been in a relationship for seven months. He's absolutely in love with her. And you know what? Fantastic. If he brought a boy home, fine. I wouldn't be all of a sudden finding a label to slap on his back. He's 15. Let the kid find out first. And it's really interesting. Um, I went to the... I went to the chemist the other day and there was this kid, there was a guy there and he had blue hair and I was saying, oh, my kid would really love your hair and I showed him a photo. Just happened to be a photo of Finn. He had this big fur, my big fur stole and a, a fur hat with a feather on it. Cause you know what? The kids have always loved dressing up in, in, in things that, that 
feel awesome, especially furs and things like that. Um, you know, they, they both love that sensation, that soft sensation around their, their faces. And he said, oh, yeah, fantastic. He said, is he queer too? This is a couple of years ago. And I was like, I don't know. He hasn't even had his first kiss yet. Can we let him do that before we just, we like bang a label on the kid and pump him out into the world? So what I would really like to do you know, and the reason that ASD rocks is set up the way it is, is because it's not just from my perspective. I'm there to represent the mums. Bo's there to represent the, the, the autistic kids. Finn's there to represent the, um, the siblings. Richard's there to represent the dads. My friends are there to represent their journey having watched me. Okay, this is not supposed to be about one person's journey. This is a page to help families, people that have autism in their lives, right? Doesn't matter which part of that you fit into, someone is representing you in this, fa in this household. And it doesn't matter what that label is, whether your label is, is sibling, sister, brother, shadow children, whether your label is person with autism, whether your label is parent, parent with, with that is neurodiverse, parent that is ADHD, parent that is, you know, or identifies as this, that. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you are two females raising one autistic child, two males raising one autistic child, one transgender and another male. Like it makes no difference what your sexual orientation is. If there is someone with autism in your life and you want to see how we managed to work through certain challenges because we've been through them all. The toilet training, you know, um, the friends thing. We don't have any friends still. Bo doesn't have any friends and he's really, really happy that way, right? Finn's got a bunch of them. Uh, he was late in getting those and that was a really big point. Go into the shadow children's playlist and check out all the information about you know, how to create an amazing relationship between your siblings. This page is about creating love, acceptance and harmony and the best family that you can have, right? The best outcome for your family. It does not matter who associates as what. And um, so, you know, AS, that's why I chose this because it rocks. The word rocks represents the weight that it can have. Sometimes it feels like you are carrying a world of rocks around. As a full-time parent and carer, that's how it feels. Sometimes it rocks. It's like, oh my God, I'm so proud. There is no one that rocks harder than my family. You guys rock. And the other one is because a lot of autistic kids rock. Yeah, that's just the way it is. So guys, Let's put to bed, I think, the divisions and let's start looking at what we have in common and how we can help each other rather than, you know, divide ourselves as I, I identify as this or this or this or this or hashtag this or hashtag that or, you know, flag this or puzzle piece that or, you know, many colours this. I just... I understand people's want and need to to feel like an individual, but I am an individual without of all of those things. And it's it's and I love myself without all of those things. And I don't need anybody to know what my labels are. If they like me, they like me. If they don't like me, you think me saying, "Hey, listen, did you know I've got dyslexia or any of the other diagnoses I've got?" is going to make them like me any better? Who cares? I have the best family in the world. My boys are the most amazing boys in the world. Who they are, how they identify, what they think of everyone is exactly the same way I do. We're all humans. We all have the same color blood, right? We should be helping each other, loving each other, considering each other's feelings and trying to build on a community rather than a division.